Hello there, it's Anna. Welcome to the garden. Today I wanted to talk about seeds that you can still sow in June, just direct sow right into your garden and grow right now. There's still plenty of time. Um, for me, my last frost date was the middle of April, um, but I know for a lot of you, this is maybe even right around your last frost date. Um, and I got a lot of things growing in my home garden here, but if you know, um, I do also have a garden plot um, over at a community garden. And we've been a little behind this year and haven't planted out a lot of stuff yet. So um, it's June and I'm just now getting to planting some things, but I'm not worried at all. It's totally fine. As I said, there's still plenty of time to grow a lot of really great crops for your garden. So I wanted to talk through some of the things that I'm gonna be planting um, right around here in June. So the first one is pumpkins. And you actually don't wanna get your pumpkins started too early um, if you want them to be ripe right around Halloween. Um, I have definitely planted pumpkins like first thing and then you know had ripe pumpkins that were ready to go in like the end of July, which is not exactly pumpkin season yet. I do love fall, but that's a little early even for me. Um, so definitely you can look at like how many days uh, till maturity. This one is 110 days and kind of calculate that out um, from Halloween. Uh, but mid-June, early June is totally fine. I'm going to do a few different kinds. So one of these is this red warty thing, <laughs> which is just so cute and fun. I just love the look of those that have um, like all the different little bumps all over them. And um, this is kind of like that red look, which is sort of the color scheme I think we're gonna do um, for the fall, for fall decorations, like the reds and oranges. Um, so really pretty, but you also can use this for pie. It says um, veggie roast pie, soups. You can eat your uh, red warty thing. So I don't know if I'm gonna be eating mine, but it's possible. I also got like just called this is a cornucopia gourd mix so just like that mix of gourds that you see at the garden center or you know um, farm stands um, just all those different kinds of gourds so we'll pop a few of these in and see see what happens see how they grow different shapes colorful mixture super fun and then possibly I may do one of these one of these really huge Big Max pumpkins. You know, I, these are like, I think the ones you can get to be like 100 pounds and more, six feet in diameter. I don't want pumpkins to get that big. <laughs> so I probably let a few grow on the vine. I think if you're gonna get one of those like prize winning pumpkins, you have to like cut off all the other flowers and leave just one and grow that. So I'm, I'm sure I will not get a 100 pound pumpkin. I don't even know what I would do with that, honestly. I don't think that would fit in my car. Um, but I may just like, just to get a few big pumpkins, like grow some and, and let a bunch of them flower on the vine. And hopefully that would mean that I won't have too many pumpkins. <laughs> Is there such a thing as too many pumpkins? Um, okay, then I'm gonna do some squash. So you can still grow squash as well. I've been really late this year on planting squash, um, but it's totally fine. Um, I'm gonna do an early summer crookneck. So this is actually, yeah, just 50 days to harvest. So totally a perfect time um, to get this in the ground. You'll have fruit in like 50 days, so no problem there. And this is just that classic um, crookneck. But I did like it because it said early harvest. So, you know, it is an, an earlier producing one. Let's see how many days till maturity this one is. Does it say here on here? I'm not sure. It's supposed to be flavorful and prolific. This is the Galbert Englisher custard. I just thought they were kind of a cool looking squash. And I've really been liking these kind of like patty pan style squashes. Oh, there's an airplane going over. Um, I really, really enjoyed them last year. And I, I grew lemon squash last year. I'm gonna grow that again. Really, really, really prolific. Um, yummy, just delicious, uh, kind of like, kind of like how you would use a zucchini that's how i used my um, lemon squash and loved it really sweet maybe like a little sweeter than a zucchini that's what i find with these kind of like patty panty kind of squashes they're usually you know you can use them like you would a zucchini but they're usually just like a little sweeter uh but yeah super yummy and they look like lemons kind of fun so we'll get those going uh another thing that you can get started um in in june are our pole beans i'm gonna do a purple this is rich purple pod pole bean what are the days of maturity on this yeah 60 to 65 days of maturity so totally fine and then this pink tip greasy 
also um, just have to have supports for these. So if you're gonna grow pole bees, they do grow up something. You wanna have some kind of support system or trellis or something that they um, can grow on. I do struggle with having spider mites on my uh, pole beans and I wish I knew what the answer was or how to solve it. I don't, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try some. I have like a really nice trellis system. <laughs> so many birds right now. Um, and so I'm gonna try that out. Okay, then I'm gonna do a gourd, a birdhouse gourd. So another one that like, there's still definitely time. Just throw it in right at the beginning of June. Birdhouse gourds are so fun. And I remember as a kid, like making the birdhouses. So I wanna try to do that with my daughter. Um, and yeah, just gonna throw these into the ground. Gourds, you can definitely get going kind of like same line with the pumpkins. You can get them started now, it's not too late. And then I'm going to do some corn. This is um, Seneca red stalker corn. So it's a corn with a red stalk. I want to have decorative corn for the fall. So that's kind of the theme for my plot this year, I think is sort of like fall decor and fall crops. So um, corn will be really pretty for the fall garden. And I just want to be able to like harvest those corn stalks and use them for decor. And there is time, there's time to get corn going. It will definitely be ready in time for my purposes, especially because I'm not even worrying about getting a harvest of the actual corn cobs. I just want those corn stalks, which I can pick really once they're big enough, even if they're not dry, I'll just pick them bring them here. Last year I set them up along this arch trellis behind me and then they just dried out and looked beautiful and fall-like and, and everything and they were good to go. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit now and talk about some flowers that you can plant in June. So sunflowers. I am going to be doing a mammoth sunflower because how fun, big and beautiful. These will be like probably flowering at the end of August if I get them going right about now. And then an evening star sunflower, which also has a little bit of that kind of like fall look. And since I'm planting them, maybe just slightly later than I normally will, I'll be hopefully feeling like that fall vibes. And this will be really, really perfect. 80 to 90 days. So, you know, by August, I should have, um, I should have these evening star sunflowers. And this is a branching sunflower, which I really like because then you can, you know, pick and harvest and harvest as you go more and more blooms of course if you have like a um mammoth sunflower they're super fun but they grow up and they grow one flower and then they're done with the branching sunflowers you get lots and lots of branches smaller flower heads but more flowers and so like for a home gardener like me where i'm not growing fields and fields of sunflowers for production i just want to be able to pick a few stems to put on my my garden or my garden i could put them in the garden but a few stems to like put on my table um this is a perfect a perfect kind of thing because then i can just like pick a few i still have blooms out in the garden and i have more blooms coming so i really love a branching sunflower i'm gonna throw in a mix of um cutting flowers I don't know if they have a days to maturity on this one, but it has zinnias, bachelor buttons, um, mallow, all kinds of different things. And I may not get every flower to come up and fully bloom, but I, I think I still have time. And I encourage you, you know, if you have just like a cheap seed packet like this and you want to give it a try, throw it in. Again, my more northern gardeners, you're like, yeah, I have to. <laughs> I have no other choice. Uh, so yeah, just throw it in. Beginning of June, we're, we're, we're totally good to go for flowers. Um, then I'm going to also put in some holy basil, but any kind of basil is a great thing to grow at any time during the summer. Honestly, you can do a lot of successions throughout the summer because uh, basil is a really quick growing crop and you can start harvesting it, um, you know, pretty early on because the more that you harvest, the more it branches out and you get a bigger, more full, beautiful basil plant. I have a ton of like sweet basil and the kind of classic basils growing here at the home garden. So this one is actually going to be um, holy basil, which is just, uh, it's not really like culinary basil in the same way, but I think it'll be really pretty to add uh, to bouquets and to have as kind of like a filler. So that's really why I'm doing the holy basil. I have heard this smells amazing. I have heard people rave about the scent of holy basil. 
to me it doesn't smell like anything and so that's why i'm trying in another garden too because i want to see if i can smell that smell that everyone's talking about let me know if you can you smell holy basil do you do you find it to be like the most beautiful smelling thing or are you like me like sitting here like not quite sure let me know um, then I'm going to throw in a few Cosmos. Cosmos grow really quickly, especially when you've got like that summer heat and give them enough water and everything and they will just grow super fast and start flowering. So um, I'm going to do a carpet mix, which has like those kind of yellows and oranges. I think it'll be just really beautiful and bright and fresh in the garden. And then the last flowers I'm going to be planting are zinnias and zinnias are amazing if you're short on time i have started zinnias in july and had them blooming in the garden by like the end of august they just take off and i don't see they have a day to maturity here yeah 70 to 90 days to maturity i'd say i've even gotten them faster than that if it's warm enough out they just go crazy so i'm doing an isabella which is like a white a salmon, which is that beautiful salmon color, and then candy stripe, which are always fun. They have like different stripes and variegation in the petals and are super, super gorgeous. So those are all the things that I am going to go plant out of the plot. I need to get them started pretty much ASAP here. They need to get out there. Um, the days are getting warmer. It's getting hot. It's getting humid. As you can see, my hair is going to be very frizzy I'm sure in all of these videos going forward um but anyways let me know what you're planting in June I'd love to hear if there's something that you love to plant this time of year and I'll talk to you in the next one bye bye